Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com and today is tutorial number 22. Now we're going to jump back into our item creation uh, scripts for this one. So I'm going to open up Unity and Mono Development and in Unity I'm going to create a new script. I'm just going to close my character classes. It's going to be under items. It'll be a C-sharp script and this script is going to be for our buff items so buff items and I'll go ahead and open that up in mono development or I guess mono develop and pretty much the same thing as before I'm gonna get rid of the system collections because I'm not going to need it I'll get rid of the start and the update make sure to name my class and get rid of the mono behavior I'm going to inherit from item which is the class we created last time so in our live show we determined that we wanted to have two different arrays one for buff items and one for the stat that's going to be buffed so let's go ahead and create those two arrays right now uh, so they're going to be private the first one's an integer array and these will be the mods so we'll just say buff mods and we'll create the second one private and it's of type stat actually I think we called it base stat yes we did and these will be the stats I get buffed I'm gonna make these singular and not plural now we're gonna create the constructor the default constructor for this first so that's gonna be public and I've got it called the bug item. I want buff item. And I'm just going to save this off and check in Unity to make sure that I actually named it right. Ah, uh, whoops. I did name it wrong. It's supposed to be buff item, not buff items. So I'll reopen that in Unity. And we'll notice that the old one, since it doesn't exist anymore, just disappears. So we're going to want a way to set these up. So we have two arrays. There's probably a better data type we could use for this. So let's introduce you to hash tables. Now if we're going to use a hash table in C sharp, we actually will use that using statement. So using system dot collections. And then instead of having these two lines up here, we're going to create a, a private instance of our hash table. So hash table, and I'm just going to call it buffs. Now the way a hash table works is that think of it kind of like a spreadsheet, and you store things in a in a index value kind of notation. So let me just make a little note down here just to show you kind of how it works. So in this instance where we're going to be saving our buffs, we're going to save it as our stat name. So let's say might, and then we're going to want to store the value of the buff. So let's say it adds 50. Now let's say this particular item adds more than just one buff. So let's say it also buffs our melee offense. And you know, let's say it adds 100 to that. Uh, this here will be your index and this here is going to be the value so this is kind of how it's stored in your hash table uh, let's see if this comes a little more clear as we move along so the first method I'm going to create I'm going to skip over the constructor and I'm going to create the add method so I'm going to say public since we're adding something it doesn't return anything so we'll just say void and we'll just say add buff Now we're going to want to receive a stat here. Oops, sorry, that'd be a base stat. And a modifier for that stat. Well, we've actually got to name the variable we're passing in. Then for an integer, the actual modifier we're getting for. So how do we add things to our hash table? So we'll just come down here, call buffs, 
which is the name of our hash table, and use its add method. Now you notice that it wants an object key and an object value. So that's the, the key value pair. Now the value is going to be the mod, and the key will be the stat name that we have given it. Uh, we don't actually have a name for our stat, which I thought we had given to the stats earlier. Let me just quickly check. We have base stat, and we do not have a name. Uh, let's check attributes. Yes, okay, I gave the name to the attributes. I'm going to want all my stats to have this now. So I'm just going to actually take this name property. I'm going to move it to base stat. And I'm also going to take the getter and setter for it. And, uh, yep, just cut that out. I'll paste that in down here. I want to put it with the rest of the getters and setters, so it'll be right in here. Close that down. And we'll also want to go in and take this here out of the constructor. Make sure there's no other thing here about name. Okay, I'm just going to save it off, close it, come back here, and in the constructor here, just paste that in save it off and now if I come back here and hit the dot I should have a name there it is down here there might be a better way to reference it I'll think about it uh, a little bit later for now we're just going to use the name and don't forget the semicolon at the end we'll save that so for our constructor we're going to want to initialize this so we're just going to say buffs equals new hash table. But I'm also going to have an overloaded constructor, which is going to be called buff item, but it's going to pass in a hash table. And I'm just going to call it HTT for hash table. Now what this is for is when we're loading stuff up after a save, uh, we can take the hash table that we have stored in another file or a database or wherever we have it stored and just pass it directly in. And we may may not use this function later on, but let's just put it in just, to, just for completeness. So we'll say bus is equal to ht. Now, I don't foresee having to remove a buff from an item, but it might come up. And it's pretty easy to do, so let's just add that in right now. So we're going to make a public void. And, whoops, not add buff, remove buff. Maybe when an item breaks, if you can repair it afterwards, but you lose one of the buffs off of it. Uh, like I said, we may may not use this method, but we'll add it anyway. So the buff that we want to remove... I'm not sure how we want to do it. Do we actually want to remove the buff itself or just a random? Well, we'll remove the buff actually itself. So we're just going to say base stat, stat, integer. Well, we don't even need the integer part. We just need to know what stat we're removing from this item. And then we can call buffs, dot, and remove. And the key that we're going to be passing in, which is going to be the stat dot name. Now that's pretty much all we need for our buff item for now, but I want to add a little bit of debugging in here because when you try to add something to a hash table, if the key already exists, you could get an error. And I'm not sure about removing. I'll have to check on that. So we're just going to put this in what's called a try-catch block. And I'm not sure if I've introduced you to that yet. But basically the way it works, let me just get the basic syntax up here. The, basically the way it works, it says try this. 
and whatever is between these curly braces it'll try and if it works great it just pops out down here and continues on with the code but we have nothing after that but let's say it tries this and for some reason it gets an error well we can catch an exception and I'm just going to call mine E and then we could do something with that exception uh, for now I'm just going to put it out to the screen and I'm just going to do E dot to string actually let's see what properties E has E doesn't have anything uh, we're going to have to go up here and add another using statement and we'll just add system that will allow us to capture exceptions and now E should have a two string there we go and one other method we might want to know is how many buffs are actually on this item so this will return an int and it will be public and we'll just call it uh, buff count and we're just going to call buffs or oh, return statement first so return buffs dot count there it is down here and we'll close that off and we're also going to want a way to be able to get a list of those buffs so I guess we should add a way for that too so public and we're going to return the hash table for now it might be better a little bit later on to convert this to an array to pass back, but if we need to come back and refactor it, we will. But we'll call this method get buffs. And we're simply just going to return the buffs. So I'll save that off. I'm just going to check Unity, see if there's any errors. Nothing there. And that should be a good outline for what we want. Like I said, we may want to come back and refactor this. Now, now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking that we, maybe we should have used a list instead of a hash table. But, you know, it's all part of the fun. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.